So next up is Felix Selgert from the University of Bonn in Germany. And the title of the topic is Building a Topic Model for 19th Century Handwritten Sources, the Immediat Zeitungsberichte of the Prussian Administration, a very nice long German word. <laughs> so the floor is yours. OK. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Um, yes. Um, this is joint. Okay, perfect. So um, this is joint work with Alexander Amakov, who is also at Bonn University, but who is not here today. So all questions um, and um, are on me. Um, yeah, this is about building a topic model from handwritten sources, um, and there are some things to entangle, um, as as you said. Um, why the Rhine province? What is a topic model? And um, uh, what is an immediate Zeitungsbericht? Um, so um, let's start with Prussia that you're seeing on the right hand side of the slide. Um, we are concentrating on the um, Rhine province of the Prussian monarchy uh, because this is a very dynamic region in the early 19th century in terms of social modernization uh, and economic modernization. Um, and also in, in terms of state building, um, this region is one of the regions uh, in Germany that adopted very early the French uh, institutional rule set. So these are all um, very interesting um, things um, economic historians, well, yeah, um, so I'm, I'm an economic, economic historian, are interested in. Um, the Zeitungsberichte um, are um, governmental reports to the king, that is the immediate part. So the regional administration are sending monthly reports to the king um, and his cabinet. And these, um, these reports contain information on weather conditions, agriculture, trade, security police, and uh, several administrative reforms. So they are very rich source for constitutional, social, economic, and as well as envi environmental history. And they also have a time and space dimension. So we can compare uh, different regions that are more rural, that are more urban, that are more dynamic in um, terms of uh, social and economic modernization. Um, so that's a very interesting source, but it's uh, hardly used by historians um, because, well, it's a quite um, large source. Alone for the um, for the Rhine province between 1816 and 1822, there are 44 volumes in the Geheime Staatsarchiv in uh, Berlin with over 5,000 handwritten pages. Um, so. There are two problems here um, to transcribe these um, these pages and to, to make sense of this large amount of textual data. Um, and here's where transcribers is coming in and transcribing this data. And here's where topic modeling uh, is coming in in terms of making sense of this information. What a topic model basically is doing um, is that it's um, a machine learning, an unsupervised machine learning tool that allows you to assign topics, so uh, meaning, uh, uh, sensible meaning to um, a large amount of documents. Um, so it's a form of distant reading based on mathematical analytical methods. How um, looks, uh, does our workflow look like? So we have first the transcribers workflow. That's the, the classic um, workflow. I would say we digitized um, our documents via the DocScan app and the scan tent. Um, we uploaded it to the platform. We first did a layered anal analysis, um, did a transcription. We also developed an own model. And then we tagged sections and subsections. Because the thing is for, um, for a topic model, you need um, documents um, below the um, below the log logical structure of each report. So we did this tagging to um, extract extract these subject sub subsections and to um, uh, produce our documents. And we used these tags to export TXT files. And for this um, use case, we commissioned uh, 
a new um, export function that allows you to um, split txt files um, via tags. So this is the start and end tag um, here. Um, so it's a very useful tool, I think. Uh, maybe you want to try it out as well. Um, then we have the topic model workflow, which is still work in progress. Here we are importing our txt files um, with a pandas data frame um, or some other um, Python uh, data, um, data forms. We pre-process and lemmatize, uh, clean the data, um, then we train, we train the topic model. Um, and the key here is that we are trying out different models, classic LDA um, algorithms, algorithms, but also HDP algorithms that allow us to, um, to, to develop correlated topic models. We may also develop a dynamic topic model. Um, what topic models are doing, they're spitting out lists of words, and that is where the historian comes in. Um, we have to interpret these lists of words and give them sensible meaning. Um, and then we can assign these topics back to documents um, that are in our collection or to new talk documents um, and making sense of the meaning in these documents as well. Um, we are basically working with Python, with several Python um, libraries, Gansom, NLTK, and TomatoPy, and um, we are implementing this in Jupyter Notebooks, and um, it's also planned to bring this on the Jupyter Hub platform. So this is a, a picture of how these results can look like. On the left side of the screen, you're seeing the um, topics in a two-dimensional space, which basically gives you some information how these topics are correlated. On the right-hand side is a word list, a word list, and the uh, red bars um, giving you the frequencies of the, um, um, of the most common terms in the topic and the blue bars are the uh, frequencies of this word uh, in the overall corpus. So in this case, uh, the top words are rheumatic, fever, gastric, and so on. So this is an, an epidemic um, topic here. Um, and, um, and this is indeed um, a, um, assigned to a section which is called Krankheiten, Viehseuchen, and so on. So um, what basically um, at this stage we can say our model works, then that's a good thing. Um, uh, again, we can do this for all these categories the administration had, um, had decided on, and um, when we calculate our topics, we mostly assign the correct topic to these, um, uh, to see, to these subsections. So, um, what are the takeaways or what is the power of this model and, and where, one, where do you want to, where do we want to go from here? First of all, um, this model uh, may facilitate the heuristic of a master. So it uh, helps historians to deal with great, uh, uh, a great amount of textual data. Um, we can do diachronic and synchronic comparisons even beyond the, the Rhine province, beyond, beyond the period 1862, 1872. Um, but we can also address some methodological aspects. So uh, which topic models uh, or which sources are, for which sources are topic models uh, needed or are they needed at all in, uh, in histori historical research? Uh, which topic models work best uh, in these cases and so on? Um, well, um, what we're also planning is the, uh, what I want to stress out, this last bullet point here, we wanted to, um, to build a platform that students and other researchers can use where the engine, um, the model is uh, some levels below so that we are, we are facilitating the use of these models within the community. So thank you very much. Um, Thank you very much for this interesting insight into an NLP topic. Um, yeah, in which many uh, among our community are very interested because this is the actual information that you want in the end. So HTR is a sort of um, yeah step in between digitizing the document and getting uh, interesting information out at the other end. So are there any questions?
that you would like to ask. Oh, yeah, please, Milan. Just let me give you the microphone because you're closed. And yes. Thank you for the presentation. Um, I was wondering, how does this, this workflow basically that you presented relate to your analytical process? What kind of questions do you ask? Uh, how does this um, in practice relate to your, your, the interpretation of your results and, and finding new answers and conclusions? So your, this is on as well. Yes, okay. it is. Um, you're uh, are you alluding to the um, topic model workflow. Yeah. Yes. Um, so basically, um, let's first, it's a heuristic tool to, to, to better understand your, um, the source material, um, but it's an iterative, iterative uh, process and we are within this hermeneutic cycle. So we have to, to read, um, the document as well, but, but, what the, um, the topic model is doing, it can hint to us what part of this huge map of documents um, we should read first and um, yeah so does this uh, does do the topic models inform the um, formulation of your research questions or do you first think about research questions and then try to answer them using the topic models you can do both uh, in this case we are coming from the topic model so as i as i said these methodological aspects are um, also a prior priority in the research agenda because um, where do you see topic models in um, historical research is mainly um, newspapers. So, and one of the questions here is, can we transfer these types of models to other sources um, and how can we profit from them? So this is, priority research question in this in this particular case um, but in a more general um, from a more general view I think the power of these models first lies in this um, uh, yeah first step of hermeneutic um, to formulate as a, as a tool to formulate research questions but it can also go the other way around okay then we have another question from Anamika why do topic modeling and not a using a restricted vocabulary so that you are sure that um, um, you do not have the computer come up, pop up words that uh, are not comparable to other words? For instance, uh, if you uh, your list uh, actually resembles uh, quite a lot of my restricted for vocabulary on uh, police ordinances uh, for the uh, 16th, 17th and 18th century. And uh, you can train a model, for instance, within ANIF, and you can then apply that uh, to your sources. But then you're sure that the computer won't pop up words that, um, well, you wouldn't be able to compare to other sources. Well, it's always the question of what stop words you're putting into these uh, into these models, basically, isn't it? It doesn't work with stop words. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, restricted vocabulary can only choose from the list that you provide. So that's uh, the, the list of topics. So no stop words uh, yeah, are in yes. there. Okay, but in this case, what, what, what the, the, the thing is, what the, the advantage of a topic model is that you, you're not influencing the learning pro process in the, from, the, from the beginning, from the start. So I don't have to say, these are the keywords I'm searching for. Um, I can do, um, do let the computer do the learning and then I have to react and say, okay, um, this is that topic, these are these issues and so on. So, um, it's, yeah, the, that's the beauty of it. You may be surprised by, by new results and what you're not, what, what, what you're not, what think, think about while you're making these lists. Yeah. I think the research design is, uh, yeah, it depends on what you want to do with your research design, right? And you have to tailor it to the purpose of your research then. Okay. We have another question here. Uh, you showed us these uh, categories, um, and when did you link uh, these 
categories with your data within Transcribus or afterwards? And when afterwards, how? Um, so these the, these sections. Um, this the, sec uh, um, it was on one of the last slides uh, here. Here, yeah. This is the topic model. So um, yeah. Or on the on the right hand side, these cate yeah. categories on the, of the Zeitungsbericht are um, are the um, structured uh, kind of marginalia in the um, in the reports, um, which are scalp marked handle and so forth. Um, we are using that to, to uh, do snippets of text um, and then putting, and then these are our documents and then we are throwing these documents into the model and the model does not know how the label is. Okay. Yeah. Um, and what we, we come back is um, a list of words and then I assigned these list of words to topics um, and I, uh, I can uh, then uh, put, the, put, the, uh, put the whole um, thing back together. Um, but these categ categories within, I tagged them with transcribers. These are transcribers tags. These are the, um, yeah. th this is what I wanted yeah. to, to these know. Are transcribers. Uh, you wanted to ask another question? Okay. So, any other questions? If there aren't any, then I think we have made really very good time. Um, thanks a lot, everybody. Thank you to you as well as our last speaker today. And obviously you're getting a mug too. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. And yeah, uh, this is uh, the last um, session for today here at the university building. And uh, the conference dinner will be at eight at the, at the place called Bierstendl, which is in Klostergasse 6 here in Innsbruck. Uh, you can find all the information on the website. You have a QR code and the link on the back of your name tag if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, so on the cheat sheet, you can find where you need to go. Uh, and now, yeah, you have some time to go back to your hotel, relax a bit, freshen up for the dinner and hope to see many of you there later on. Thanks a lot and see you.